Hi, my name is Chantelle Delaney. I'm a certified herbal practitioner and product educator for M Squared. And today, in honor of spring and planting season and gardening season, we are going to talk about healthy soil, the key to sustainability. So we're gonna talk about some cool initiatives that are happening for soil health around the globe and little things that you can do at home to help. So first let's talk about what soil health means and what it does. So soil is one of the most important natural resources that we have. If you consider for a moment what it affects, all of our food is grown in soil and for our carnivore folks, that food's food is also grown in soil. The quality and health of the soil directly impacts the nutrition of that plant, which directly affects whatever is consuming that plant, be it human, animal, insect, or fungi. So soil health and biodiversity go hand in hand, and biodiversity is defined sorry, as the variety of life in the world or in a particular habitat or ecosystem. So it is a blend of plants, animals, insects, and fungi that naturally occur in an environment and who each play vital roles in one another's existences. So if one piece of that puzzle is removed, the whole system is affected to varying degrees, and soil health is really the at the basis, at the root of all of this. So um, where soil health is most important is in agriculture. So farming large areas of land with one crop causes a lot of imbalances in soil health. So there's less food sources for pollinators, there's less nutritive foods and less opportunity for animals to live and survive there. So by maintaining a level of biodiversity by doing things like regular crop ro rotation or companion planting or strategic design of farmland to encourage birds and insects and animals and native plants to thrive, uh, growing large amounts of crops can be a lot less damaging to the environment. Um, on a smaller scale, we can also keep this in mind for home gardening too. So certain plants pull minerals from the soil that other ones put back in. So rotating where you plant things can really improve your quality and your yield from, from your garden. So as well, composting helps to deliver nutrients back into the soil, along with promoting beneficial bacteria that works to build resiliency to disease and uh, in insect infestation, as well as increase the nutrients that ultimately end up in those plants. Um, bird houses and bat houses and bird feeders uh, and bee houses are all great ways to protect biodiversity where you live, whether that's rural or uh, in the city. So not only are you attracting pollinators by having those things, you're also helping to build soil health too. Uh, bird feces and especially bat feces or guano is particularly good for soil health. You can also put bee houses up and you can often get larvae from your local garden stores or online to increase native bee populations where you live. Mason bees are really easy to do. They're an early spring bee, so you can start with them around now, and then you can do leaf cutters later in the summer because they're on slightly different life cycles. These are all non-stinging bees. They don't make honey, but they're crucial pollinators he uh, here in Canada, and it's a really kind of cute, fun exercise for people of all ages to do. So considering biodiversity and soil health shouldn't stop at food and flowers. You should consider it with every purchase that you make. Uh, if you, like me, love cosmetic products, they are crafted with flowers and plants and oils that have an em environmental impact to create. So biodiversity and sustainability going hand in hand are the brands that you're buying doing what they can to ensure these things. So we don't often think about cosmetic products as having the same environmental impact as a food item, but they, they really do. Um, so if you aren't sure if the companies that you are uh, purchasing from are taking the right steps to protect soil, you can look for certain uh, certifications. So there are soil certifications, there's biodynamic farming certifications, and uh, the best one to look for is called UEBT. I don't know if you can see that on the side there. Um, UEBT is this one right here. So UEBT is an acronym for the Union for Ethical Biotrade, and it's all about biodiversity. So Walida is UEBT certified as well as biodynamic. Um, in fact, we might not have biodynamic 
farming at all if it weren't for Rudolf Steiner, who is the founder of Walita. So back in the 1920s, he recognized that farming was becoming very industrialized and chemical laden. So he set out to solidify a method of farming that's not just focused on a single crop, but on the biodiversity of that whole uh, ecosystem where the crop is being grown. So this includes things like protecting the native flora and fauna, doing crop rotation and companion planting and using beneficial insects, and also fermenting plant matter for encouraging healthy bacteria in the soil. So that keeps crops healthy and strong, uh, just like probiotics in your gut do, and that's essentially composting. So another thing that they do with biodynamic farming is harvesting with the sun and moon cycle so that the plant being harvested is at its optimal potency. And biodynamic farming, thanks to Walita, is now used all over the world and it is the only form of farming that is carbon negative. So this means that it actually helps to remove carbon from the atmosphere and get it back into the soil. So it is the most soil health focused method of farming and it's rooted in creating an environment for beneficial bacteria in soil to survive. All Good Brand is another really great example of a soil friendly brand. So they grow a lot of their own herbs on their organic farm in Northern California. In fact, one of the main ingredients in all of their products is very similar to Walita, uh, is their own family farm grown organic calendula oil. So calendula is also called pot marigold, they're beautiful orange flowers. Uh, it isn't actually a marigold, that's just the common name for it. Uh, in addition to calendula oil being great for your skin, this is a flower that does incredible things in the environment and for soil health. So since it has a thick fibrous root system and it grows in thick patches, it can be used as a cover crop or as a living mulch to protect the soil. It grows in really thickly and it dies right down in the off season, so it puts a lot of nutrients back into the soil. And it's also what is called a trap crop. So this means that it draws insects like aphids and thrips away from other plants. So it's a great addition to your garden to draw potentially damaging insects away. These insects do not actually damage the calendula, which is interesting. In fact, they tend to get trapped in the flower's oil, which keeps them from over multiplying. So the flowers provide this nectar and oil and pollen that attracts pollinators like bees and butterflies. And that nectar, uh, along with the pests that it traps, it attracts other beneficial insects like ladybugs and hoverflies and lacewings. So these beneficial insects stay to mate. They increase the number of beneficial insects in that ecosystem because they stick around where there is abundant food. And you can actually increase your yield of fruits and vegetables and flowers in your garden by companion planting with calendula because it's so beneficial to soil health and to pollinators. Um, another brand to be aware of when we're thinking about soil health is Biobag. So this is Biobag here. This is a brand that makes 100% compostable multi-use bags from a biodegrad biodegradable plant-based resin called Matter By. So Matter By resin acts like plastic, but it creates no microplastics and it biodegrades just like food. So most brands of biodegradable plastic bags use 5% renewable content. Biobag uses 40%, so considerably higher. They have a selection of pet waste bags, food storage bags, like, like your Ziploc bags, but a little different, and uh, bin liners for kitchen waste and compost. So this is a, a compost small kitchen bag here that I've got. Uh, their mission is to keep plastics out of landfill and to not contribute to plastic pollution. They're third party certified for being biodegradable and compostable and they're non-GMO verified. They were actually the first non-GMO brand to ever get that certification. So a quick sidebar about GMOs because they are a fairly divisive topic. Um, on one hand, we have the argument that the world is not capable of growing enough food to feed everyone without GMO's ability to increase crop yields. And then on the other hand, we have the argument that GMO crops tend to be monocrops, which destroys biodiversity and strips the soil of valuable nutrients, which affects the quality of the food and the health of who or what needs that food to survive. So there's a real quality over quantity and vice versa argument to be had. But that's not why we're here. I just wanted to share that. Uh, back to Biobag. 
Something that is really special about BioBag is that they are home compostable, meaning you can put them in your own compost bins or your municipal compost if you have that. You should always check with your municipality on this as facilities vary, but it's really important to understand that not all biodegradable bags are home compostable. In fact, a lot of the brands that are out there are not home compostable. So check your packages for third-party certifications to be sure the ones to look for um, you can see them on the package here. So BPI compostable and or OK compost both mean that that plastic is home compostable and BioBag has both of these certifications. Another one that they have that is good is they are uh, CMA approved, which means that it's a bioplastic that can be processed in landfill facilities. So not all bioplastics are able to be processed at landfill. In fact, BioBag is one of the very few brands that are. So if you buy this brand, you can be confident that it will be processed properly and that your good intentions for reducing plastic waste are not in fact contributing to more waste. Composting either at home or municipally really reduces waste, like vastly reduces waste. It's one of the best things you can do in your household to reduce waste. The majority of garbage generated in the home is compostable and composting that waste puts carbon back into the soil. It creates healthy bacteria for the soil, it creates fertilizer and um, healthy soil that can be used in your own garden, in your own planters, or uh, for maybe growing more nutritious foods for yourself, or perhaps it's used by your municipality for public spaces, public gardens, community gardens, and other food growing initiatives that serve your community and contribute to local food security. So food waste that ends up in landfill contributes to carbon emissions and it's wasted instead of repurposed. The last company I want to give a quick honorable mentions shout out to is Derma E. So while this isn't specifically related to soil, it is related to the reduction of pollution and they are closely tied together. So Derma E is part of the Clean Hub initiative, which is so cool. So Clean Hub is a company that recovers plastic waste out of environments on behalf of companies like Derma E. So for all the plastic that Derma E does use like for their caps and their pumps, Clean Hub is recovering more plastic from the oceans and recycling what they can and treating non-recyclable so that they can be turned into alternative fuel sources. So it works kind of like carbon credits. So by Derma E investing in this company, the company commits to removing at least as much plastic weight as Derma E uses in manufacturing from polluted areas throughout the world. So Derma E is committed to support the removal of a minimum of 10,000 pounds of plastic waste per year, which is actually more than they use in manufacturing, and turning that into alternative fuels. So 10,000 pounds of plastic waste is equal to 2.4 million plastic bottles. It's amazing. So by doing this, Derma E is not just plastic neutral, but plastic negative. So I love that and want to make sure that everybody is aware of this cool uh, initiative that Derma E is a part of. So that's all for now. Uh, happy spring, happy May, happy planting, happy gardening. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next time and thanks for tuning in. Cheers.